personal project for me. Um, I grew up in the Basque Country. I was born there. Mm -hmm. I was raised there until I left. When I was 12, we moved to the United States. So um, I've always been attached to the Basque Country, and I've always uh, I've kept some really good friends there. Some of my really like youngest friends that I've met when I was two. Mm -hmm. And I used to always go back. And when I moved back to uh, to France, uh, we would go every month. I think once a month, I think I would go, and I really felt, you know, that that was my home region. Mm. And uh, I, I was always looking for a reason or a project to send me back there. Yeah. So when I started, make, when I made that PDF to pitch, you know, it was really the one of the first times I really tried to, all right, it's time for me to go back there, mm -hmm. see what's going on, because you know, it's a, it's 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 you know, it's, it's a bunch of small towns next to each other, but you know, over the last 10, 15 years. Like with internet, you know, with all this, it's changed a lot as well. So yeah. it's interesting to see how it's changed. And for me, it was the the perfect moment for me to go back, mm. you know, and rediscover. Because mm -hmm. you know, I knew one side of it, but pff, I went through all these different, all these different cities and these different villages that I had never been to. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It was what do you feel like you took from that? Like on a personal level, was it good for you to do this project? Did it? Uh, oh yeah, it was. I mean, it was, was the it hardest. Pure nostalgia. Did you learn some things? It was the hardest project I've ever had to do because it was. I basically didn't sleep that much. I was on the road most of the time. Yeah. Uh, tight deadlines. Uh, I don't think the publisher was uh, very familiar with uh, the Basque Country, mm -hmm. and the Basque Country is a whole different beast, right? You know, you can. People who who go to the Basque Country, it takes you know it takes a long time for people to trust you there. I mean, yeah, it was really tough. Uh, I didn't sleep much. Um, it was you know it's during the high season anywhere in the world. You know, like any of these you know beach towns, mm -hmm. it's very hard to get any work done because you know they're they're so preoccupied with their with their customers, right? Mm -hmm. um, but through this project, I learned that you know you once you make a few connections in the Basque Country. They have a really big heart, and they're really, they're really, really welcoming. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that I was raised there as well, a lot of people love that. A lot of people love the fact that I was coming back to it after mm -hmm. all this time. They love that I, you know, I made the efforts to say a few words in Basque. Mm -hmm. I didn't grow up speaking Basque, and I'm kind of learning now uh, through this book here, this little book, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some probably, you know, CDs and stuff because it's not an easy language to learn. Sure. Uh, but I made the effort, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the first step. A lot of Parisian photographers, when they go down there, they don't make any effort. They speak to them in French directly. Uh, well, some some Basque will just tell you to get out, you know, so they, they won't want to deal with you. So uh, I learned how to be very patient. I learned how to find the proper angle, the proper way to, you know, approach these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, so on a human level, I learned a lot. As I was meeting these people, uh, I started to realize how to approach them. And uh, I think that... Uh, I would feel more comfortable going to a region that I don't even know that well and doing yeah. the same thing because it was just so I had I had to put myself out there so much that I feel that like it's it's a really good exercise to put yourself outside of your comfort zone mm -hmm. and once you start doing it it just becomes like it's not a big deal anymore yeah it makes and sense I'm, and I'm sure you've experienced that I don't know I've, I've always been within my comfort zones I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> never left them um, so when people if anybody's interested in, in getting this book, one of the things we're gonna we're avoiding asking questions about, or I'm avoiding asking questions about, because who cares, is uh, his equipment because he's gonna be sharing the, like the cameras he uses and everything else later in a more fun way than just talking about it. But if people are watching this and they're interested and they want to know more about it, where how can they find out like when it's being released, where they can buy it, and will it even be in English? Is another question. I've submitted all the content to the publisher and they're in layout phase, right? So. For the next few weeks, they're going to be working on the layout and sending it out to print, and it's going to be coming up very, very, like, fairly soon. That's why the deadlines are so short, because they mm -hmm. want to get it out to print uh, in August, or mm -hmm. end of August, uh, and it's going to be released on October 10th. That's pretty quick. So, where can people get it? Um, where can you get it? Well, if you live in France, you can probably get it at FNAC. At FNAC, at any bookstore. Yeah. Right? Any, yeah. any place where they sell. Uh, cookbooks, you'll probably get it because it's it's gonna be nationwide, mm -hmm. and probably like I'm hoping also Belgium and other French-speaking countries in Europe. I'm hoping Canada. I'm hoping you know in French-speaking uh, African countries as well. That'd be great. You'll also find it online on Amazon. Okay. Yeah, I have a few friends who bought my Indian cookbook on Amazon. 
So this book is going to be in French and in French. This book will be in French. Yeah. And in French only. In order to, to have it in English, we'd have to have another publisher, like an Anglophone or, right. an, or an American publisher or a British publisher, buy the whole book yeah. and translate it. Right? Yeah. And they just use the photos afterwards, and then the whole layout would be different. Yeah. That's a whole other ball game. I wish I could tell you more about that, but that's out, out, outside of my control. You have to wait and see what happens. Yeah, hopefully it'll do really well here, and uh, yeah, maybe we can do another cookbook with... Uh, an American publisher. Yeah. Get, we'll, we'll get the best food going. We'll, yeah. we'll figure it out. The other thing I was going <laughs> to say was um, earlier, so this is going to be doing like 80 to 100 recipes is a lot. It's a lot of work, and you did everything in like two months. Mm -hmm. What? How, how, how much time would you normally spend on a project like this? Uh, yeah, so it was, it was pretty intense. Uh, I would say a year. Not because. A year? Yeah. And you did it in two months? Yeah. Why a year? Because, you know, you want to go through the. Four seasons. Right. You want to you see want, the chilies. You, yeah. You ripen. want to see the chilies ripen. You want to see. Um, you want to see the animals uh, go through a whole yearly cycle because they they go from the farm, then they go up to the mountains to go rest for a few months. So that's also very beautiful shots to get, mm -hmm. which I could get this time. Um, obviously, vegetables will be different as the season goes, so some plates could be different colors, mm -hmm. and uh, and some of the ingredients, some of the so there was a bit of. Um, Poultry uh, that's really present in Basque uh, food. Mm -hmm. It's kind of pigeon. It's kind of a, it's a bird. And they they hunt this bird, but it, it's only during the months of October and November. So yeah, so I would say um, a whole year. Uh, I discovered this new uh, Basque uh, corn as well, there, mm -hmm. which is called uh, it's a red corn and has beautiful colors. And I just I'm so excited to go back and go shoot that again because yeah. it's not gonna be for this book, but I want to go and shoot it because it's just amazing. It's just beautiful. Cool. Red corn. If you want to see some behind the scenes of what it looked like, you can go see my vlog when I was down in Biritz and Bayonne. At some point, we spent a few days together, so you can see that. Yeah, and you, we also went to eat in one of the restaurants that will be in the book. So yes, we there'll did. be a the bit first of a one we went to. Peak. Yeah, the first right out right after the airport. Yeah, you picked yeah. me up in the airport. We went yeah. straight there. Yeah, that one will be in the book. It's yeah. good for sure. It's really good. And uh, yeah, then we're we'll, we're gonna focus on the next projects. Focus on Paris and yeah. uh, just start. Creating more content here. Yeah, you should I definitely follow his Instagram just for the stories too, because then you get to see the omelets and things like that as they're happening. It's too late now, <laughs> but you'll be here for the next time he ends up. You go, you end up going to some really ridiculous and cool things. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I can't say too much about it, but yeah, I'm. I definitely feel privileged, and for, and I'm just happy that you know people were following me during this whole thing. And uh, it was good. It was. I needed the. I needed moral support. It was not. A, it wasn't an easy project. That was, no, it was brutal. It's a complete. We had lots of late night texting sprees. It's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I definitely needed that, that moral support. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Thank, thanks for that. Anytime. So yeah. So how about we uh, have a glass of wine and uh, chat about how we can take over Paris now? It is, we invade Paris. <laughs>